In our continuing video series on audio terms or audio terminology, I'm going to cover a couple today that, again, I feel go together. And you'll see me do this in some of these videos because a lot of the terms that people use, they may in some cases be uh, you know, different names for the same thing. And today we're going to talk about tight and punchy. And those are two terms that I personally consider being similar, if not completely identical, when someone's describing the performance of a loudspeaker or of, of a system or a system component. Tight and punchy, what does that mean? I look at it and I understand it and I've always associated it with uh, the bass quality of the loudspeaker, so the low frequency quality. So a punchy speaker or a tight speaker is one where the bass notes, you know, let's, let's assume the kick drum of a drum kit has a very tight, hard punch with just the right amount of trail or overhang after, after the drum beat. It's almost, if you think about it, like the system or the loudspeaker is starting and stopping really quickly. Now, of course, this is going to be recording dependent because I've heard some awful mushy bass drum in some recordings. But in a good recording, a good well-miked recording, that, that should be punchy, you know. Tightness and that punchiness may extend up into the lower mid-range. So, you know, think again about thinking about drums, think about snare drum, that tap, that attack that's there. Some of that is just the natural mid and high frequency energy, but again, there is a lower frequency component that may be tied to us you know, considering a speaker or a system to be nice and tight or, or punchy. What characteristics in a design mean that, you know, the system or the speaker is going to be tight and punchy? Well, in electronics, it's pretty easy. We have things called in amplifiers or pre-amplifier stages, slew rate, how quickly, you know, a signal can change and then go to nothing and how the electronics reacts to that. Now, electronics are almost infinitesimally perfect in that regard, at least compared to something mechanical like a loudspeaker or on the other side of the equation, if you listen to records, your, your phono cartridge, because that's a, you know, electromechanical device as well. Why a speaker will sound particularly tight or punchy has to do with, you know, the design of the woofer, the cabinet, and the tuning of that, that system. We tend to call that the, the alignment, is when all of those factors come together. So in this case, we've got a ported loudspeaker. There's a port on the back. So it's the interaction between all of the electromechanical and acoustic properties of the woofer, the cabinet, or the volume of air inside it, any damping that's in there, and the port. And all of those things combined can have an impact on the apparent punch or how tight the speaker sounds at low frequencies or how fast it sounds at low frequencies. Many people assume and will make statements like a sealed box design will always have better punch and be tighter sounding than any ported system, any types of vents, passive radiators, things like that. In many cases, that's true, but you know, there's no absolutes in this world when it comes to acoustics. If the parameters and the alignment of the speaker are not good, you can have a sealed box that, that sounds like there's some overhang uh, etc. Now, the specific things that we do in the design to get the alignment right is if there's a port, it's port tuning. We can play a little bit with cabinet volume and damping inside the cabinet. And then the actual mechanical properties of the woofer or the drive unit, the suspension components, how stiff or how flexible they are, all of this with the interaction of the other parts can determine the alignment and how punchy or tight the speaker sounds. Now there's other, one other thing that I will caution you on. I've heard many, many people state over the years that if you want real tuneful, tight, punchy bass, a smaller bookshelf speaker will always do better 
than a large floor standing model with bigger woofer or more woofers or whatever. And, you know, that statement exactly like the, you know, sealed boxes will always be better for punchiness and, and, and a tight bass sound. Um, it's just your brain in many cases playing tricks on you. And what do I mean by that? Well, a smaller speaker normally is going to have less low frequency extension. So it's not going to play as low in the bass as a big floor standing speaker. Same thing if you add, you know, a subwoofer to a pair of bookshelf speakers. Turning the subwoofer off, you're now going to lose a whole bunch of low frequency extension that the small speaker can't reproduce. Well, there's a funny thing that goes on. Our brains, in many cases, start attributing that reduction in the bass extension with being able to hear those mid-bass parts of the, of the speaker output because it's all really mid-bass and only a little bit of true bass that the speaker can reproduce, we start thinking that that sounds tighter and faster and punchier. And it's because we've cut out all of that you know, lower frequency output from the, you know, your listening. One thing to, to keep in mind there is that when you reduce the base extension of any system, your brain typically is going to say, well, uh, I'm, I'm not hearing all that really low, rumbly, thumpy stuff. So the brain latches on to frequencies the speaker can reproduce and will, in many cases, actually sound like it's faster, like it's tighter, punchier, those bass kick drum notes don't hang on for as long, but it may be because that reverberation after the kick pedal hits the, the drum head, maybe that information is actually contained at a frequency lower than the speaker can reproduce. If you want to try this out for yourself because you're skeptical and you think I'm full of it, what you can do is um, if you have your system set up with a, a home theater receiver where you've got a setting to your main speakers for crossing over to a subwoofer or you can go in and set them as small or large, you can, all, you can easily try an experiment. If you use a subwoofer in the system and you're rolling off your main speakers to blend with the subwoofer, try turning the power to the subwoofer off and listening to a track that's got well-recorded you know, drum attacks and things like that in it, and then turn it on and listen again and see what you think. I'm gonna bet in many cases you're gonna find that it sounds punchier when you do that. So, is the, is the answer, you know, at the end of the day, not to get a full range speaker, not to worry about extending down to 20 hertz? Well, I don't think that that way. I think whatever is contained in the recording, this loudspeaker should be able to reproduce. And I would never want to have a system at home that wasn't full range because you're missing some content. And, you know, if you're a fan of electronic music or pipe organ music or whatever, you're going to miss a lot of music if the speaker isn't capable of reproducing at least down to, you know, 20 to 30 hertz. But then again, you know, variety is the spice of life and many, many people love small bookshelf speakers and they never will consider adding a subwoofer to the system. And maybe that's because they prioritize that punchiness, that tight sound from the bass more than they do that bass extension. And maybe they listen to music where it, it's not that important to have that, that full range extension. So, hey, at the end of the day, it's whatever you're happy with. So I hope that answers the topic of, you know, what do punchiness and tight mean? And when we apply those terms to loudspeaker or audio system performance. As always, I really appreciate the input and the suggestions in the comments, because this is where we're gonna keep this audio terminology um, series going as long as people come bringing, uh, come up with more terms that they want to understand a little bit better. Thank you as always for watching.